What's up everyone? Today we have another circuit board repair video. Uh, this is a 1996 Toyota Tacoma with the 2ZR FE engine in it. Now this module was sent to me because it has a no communication fault uh, in it. So I wanted to verify this concern before I took this module apart. Now before I disassembled this module, I wanted to verify this concern. So I hooked up my go diag. Now my go diag is a breakout box and it's gonna feed power and ground into my module. And I also jumped my SDL wire. Now the SDL wire on the old Toyotas was the communication wire between the scan tool and the ECM. So I jumped my SDL wire to pin two of my breakout box. Then I hooked my breakout box to my uh, IM608. Just to verify, I do not have communication and I do not at this time. Uh, so now we gotta figure out why. You know, leave these connected. I'd like to leave uh, these wires connected so that I don't have to uh, pin these out after to verify repair. I'm just gonna leave that connected for now. So similar to the, uh, I think it was a T100 video I did, I found this corrosion. Um, I'm gonna try to clean it up to see how much damage was done. So I'm just gonna be using rubbing alcohol on a Q-tip. We're just gonna see what we can clean up and how much damage has occurred. So unlike my last one, these traces, they look they look a lot rough, a lot more rough than my last ones. Now, this trace up here looks to still be intact. Uh, same with this one as well. This one doesn't look to be in bad shape, but this one down below, I think I'm gonna have to run a new trace over this. Um, that, that trace, it just looks like crap. It looks like it's so brittle right here. It's still connected, but uh, I think I'm gonna run a new trace to that. These ones I'm just gonna clean up with solder. I'm gonna clean this one up with solder as well. And I'm gonna replace these two capacitors right here that are leaking. So there's one here and one right next to it. All right, there's one. Now, before taking these capacitors off, I uh, made sure that I knew where the negative side of the capacitor went, and I know that the negative side, the line, uh, faces the front of this uh, circuit. So the, the larger capacitor goes towards the inside, the smaller capacitor goes to the outside, and the negative line goes to, towards the front. So I'm gonna take both these out. That was actually easier uh, to just pull these capacitors out while heating them. Was easy so I think I'm gonna be doing it that way from now on 
I uh, still have to clean the holes out. If you look inside, let me spin this around. The holes are still filled. So I have to empty that. I have to clean that out. Put some more flux down. All four locations. Start with this one here. There's one. You're just going to take some flux, put them over these traces. Let's see if I can get this in one picture. So anywhere where there was a damaged trace, I'm just gonna go over with solder, making sure that if there's a very, very small gap in the trace, I'm just gonna clean it right up with the solder, make sure it's good to go. I still have to take care of this bottom one here. And this light makes it look so bad. The reflection from the rubbing alcohol in this light makes this board look far worse than it is. Right, so, I said we just have to finish. I'm going to run a new trace uh, over here. Just run a new trace, probably from this point, from right here, over to about right here. Right. Now I'm having trouble uh, getting all of this soldered on. This here is kind of a kind of a small trace, so I'm switching over to my Heiko soldering iron. Uh, once it heats up. Get some solder on it. There you go. Some solder on this. Get this trace soldered down. Now this stuff is so thin you can barely even see it.
so as I was cleaning this board, as I was cleaning this board off, I knocked, I seen that, that I knocked this trace off that I was saying was pretty fragile earlier. So now I'm going to be using uh, some copper trace, installing just some copper wire uh, along there just to fix that trace, which I believe might have been the problem the entire time. So I just added some solder. See if I can get this down now. So I'm just going to solder that right to there. This trace is going to go over to about right there. Uh, I'm keep it away from this this other component. We don't want to short anything out. So now we have a trace going from here to here. We're going to have to cover this up, uh, but when we clean this, we got to be gentle because this wire is uh, fairly thin. So I'm just going to cut this off. Just going to dab. Also, seen that there is a broken trace up here as well. So I'm just going to jump that one with solder. It's it's pretty small. Some more flux. That's not looking nice. go just gotta make sure that this trace here is still intact connected on both ends clean this up, throw the capacitors in it, and uh, hopefully this one's done. legs off.
last time. Clean this back side off with some rubbing alcohol, get all that flux off, all that dirt. Now, we want to make sure little trace is still in place. Connected there, connected there. And we are going to install some Crap, I can't think of what it's called, solder seal. Just to hold, hold this in place so that that trace doesn't uh, short out to anything. Like I said, this board looks like crap with the reflection of the rubbing alcohol, but it's actually kind of easier to see the fix with the light off. Use a UV light to cure it. All right. Now now we just got to see if this is fixed. So I stayed up last night. Uh, I wanted to get this finished. I had a couple more spots I needed to clean up, uh, but it was getting late. So I shut off the camera. I cleaned up the board a little more, fixed a couple spots that weren't perfect. Uh, I came down today, just wanted to film that this thing is now communicating. I uh, see on my U-scope, I have communication taking place. On uh, terminal 2, you can see the go diag uh, LED is flickering, showing that there's communication taking place. But last not, but not least, on my IM608, my coolant temperature sensor is reading negative 40. That's because I have an open circuit right now. But I have this wire hooked up to my coolant sensor circuit. If I plug it in to ground, shorting it to ground, you can see that my coolant temperature uh, jumps up to 284 degrees Fahrenheit. Which is what it should be reading. Uh, just showing that communication is taking place, engine control module seems to be working, and uh, yeah, yeah, it all seems to be ready to be shipped back.